What's up, guys? I hope uh, you're surviving. You're making it through this time at home with your your parents and your siblings all stuck in one place. And uh, we've been we've been praying for you. We've been praying um, that um, you guys are able to get your schoolwork done and um, you're able to have some some fun time too. Uh, so in Bible study, in boys' Bible study on Monday, um, we talked a little bit about discipline. We talked about um, what it looks like to be disciplined in our faith. Um, we talked about how um, a lot of people who um, play sports have to be disciplined in the way that they train for those sports and the way that they um, build their muscles. And uh, we said that we can do the same thing with our spiritual muscles, that we can do the same thing um, in our faith where we uh, work these muscles that God gave us um, so that we can have uh, a better relationship with Him and that we can grow closer to Him. We talked about um, 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, which says, Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also the life to come. And so we talked about how Paul is encouraging this young believer, Timothy, um, to, to work his spiritual muscles. He's saying, um, take these things that God calls us to do, take these commands that we have seriously and to, to work on those because they're so much more important than working any kind of physical muscle and they will be of more value to us. And so we talked about what it looks like to be disciplined and, and why we should be and why we should desire that. Um, and we talked about the difference between discipline and legalism, which is uh, legalism is just someone who's focused on the rules and they're just focused on um, following those and that there's no heart involved. And so um, we said that the difference between legalism and being disciplined is uh, the, the motivation behind it. And so being disciplined, uh, your motivation is because of the love that you have for Jesus. And whereas legalism is just uh, driven by wanting to follow the rules and wanting to be um, good, you know. And so we talked about how we as young men and as young believers in general, um, we want to be disciplined in our faith and we want to be disciplined in the things that God calls us to do um, because we love him, not because we want to follow the rules, but because we know that that's what God desires for us. All right, you guys uh, keep keep doing your schoolwork. Stay in school. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say that we had an amazing Bible study um, on Monday night with the SVBC girls. We had quite a few people show up and we had a great discussion about the book of Ruth. Um, we talked about everything from our struggles with mental illness to the way God is working even in the waiting periods. And I felt like it was so applicable to this time because right now we are in a period of waiting. We're waiting for this virus to ease up. We're waiting to, so that we can go outside. We're waiting so that we can go back to church with all of us gathered together instead of us being on our computers watching a live stream. So I'm hoping that um, more people will join us for our next women's Bible study. Those are every night at Monday, uh, on Monday at 7 p.m. Um, and we are going to continue talking about biblical womanhood. I think this next week we're going to talk about the character of Hannah. Uh, but it's been so cool just to hear what other girls want to hear about. We, um, we're really enjoying hearing about other women in the Bible and how God uses women in huge ways. So I hope you will join us next Monday for our next Bible study.
friends, I hope you are doing well. I am standing here in our four square spot, our four square corner. Uh, I just wanna let you know, this is a really sad and lonely building without you all here, and I hope that we can all be together again really, really soon. We've been discussing sanctification and holiness all week, and yesterday we focused on the reality that the reason that we pursue holiness is for the glory and the pleasure of God, that He is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Another monumental reason for pursuing holiness is the fact that we were created in the image of God. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we read, Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Being created in God's image means that we have a unique dignity and purpose. We're not perfectly like God, but we bear a likeness to God in our design as we create and we worship, we communicate and we reason and we love. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that we were created, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He also shares in Romans 8, 29, that for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. God uniquely created us to live out our created purpose and to be continually conformed to the image of Jesus. Our ability to experience the abundant life that God has designed for us will depend upon our obedience to live how we were created. I have a lake in my neighborhood and we recently, probably about two months ago, had an enormous rain. And that rain changed the oxygen content of the lake and possibly even uh, washed a little bit of pollutant into the lake. After the rain, I took my canoe out and I paddled around and I saw dozens and dozens of dead fish floating around on the surface of the water. You see, the, the fish were created to thrive in a very specific environment. When their environment changed and pollution was added and oxygen was taken away, they no longer continued to thrive and they died. See, we were very similar to those fish. We were not created to thrive in the pollution of this world, in the pollution of sin. We were created to live in communion with God in His presence. The presence of God is where we were created to thrive. There's also a very distinct missionary purpose in us being created in the image of God. We were created as God's image bearers to reflect God as an angled mirror Imagine an angled mirror that people can still see us and they can see the world around us, but they also see a reflection of God in the mirror in this third dimension. Our lives must give those around us a glimpse of the gospel as we live our day-to-day -day lives in God's presence. There is some bad news. In the fall, our first parents and Adam and Eve, they introduced sin into the world through their disobedience. And our likeness to God was distorted, but it was not lost. We were created to reflect God, but in the fall, we attempted to replace God. But there's good news. The good news is that Jesus is the perfect image of God, and Jesus is God's plan for us to embrace our original purpose as God's image bearers. Hebrews 1 verse 3 tells us that Jesus, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. As we pursue Christ and grow in our sanctification, we begin to recover more and more of God's likeness in which we were originally designed. We were designed for holiness and for purity. Holiness in the presence of God is the environment in which you were designed to thrive in. We must not allow the pollution of this world into our lives to disrupt the environment that God created for us. I want you to think of your life as an artistic canvas in which God is painting a beautiful picture to display His love to the world. Our responsibility is to live lives that accurately demonstrate and display the beauty of God's love and grace to the world.
in tonight's Zoom. Missing y'all, and I look forward to seeing you on our Zoom gathering tonight at 7.